Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be showing you how to use the Surface Scatter Instance op inside of Cables. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to press Escape, and I'm going to type in Main Loop. I'm now going to drag this out, I'm going to type in Orbit Controls, zoom out a touch. I'm now going to pull this out, I'm going to grab a MatCat material new, I need to give this a texture, so I drag this pull out, and I type in texture, move this over here, and now click on file, browse down to our MatCat library, and I grab Chrome C, press escape. I'm now going to pull this out, and I'm going to grab the surface scatter instance up. Now, as you can see, scatter an object on the surface of a mesh with different distribution methods. So here we can see a sphere, and we can see all these smaller spheres are scattered across its um, surface. So this is what we're going to be focusing on today. So I'm going to click Add. Zoom out of touch. So first of all, we need to give it a geometry, which is a surface, and then we need to give it a geometry to instance over the surface. So before we do this, we're going to visualize some stuff. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to pull this out and make a basic material. I'm now going to make a simple wireframe up. So this simple wireframe needs a geometry. So I'm going to pull this trigger out and I'm going to grab a sphere. And now I'm going to pull the geometry output and plug it in there. Let's change the color right here to something more red. Okay, great. So now we can see the vertices and the lines of the geometry. So if I go to the sphere now, and I put this in 16 by 16, or even 4 by 4, as we can see, this updates and it shows us what's going on. So let's just put on 16 by 16 for now, low poly sphere. So this is going to be my surface. So I'm just going to type that here, surface. And I'm going to plug that into that. So I'm going to show you two ways to do what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to create another sphere. And I'm now going to plug this into the um, geometry to instance. And it's going to explode because these spheres are too large. So I'm going to grab the radius. I'm going to pull it down. And I'm going to put it on 0 0.05. And as you can see, we've now got these randomly instant spheres across the surface of this uh, sphere right here. So let's click on the Surface Scatter Instance op. With the number, we can increase the amount of instances that are in the shape. Obviously, if your amount here goes past the amount of vertices, it's just going to be full, because you've got more instance um, shapes than you have vertices. So that's always going to have to be lower. So let's put it on 100 for now. So if I go to Random Seed, I can change the position. But if we go to Size Min and Size Max, and say I put this on Minimum 0, Max 2, and I then change the seed, we now also change the position and the size of each instance um, sphere. Let's zoom out a little touch. Okay, so let's put this back on one and one because there's something else I want to show you. So a vertex is a point right here. And when we have three points, we can draw a triangle. When we have two points, we can draw a line. So the distribution method now is vertex. So as you can see, all of the instance spheres are exactly on a vertex. So if we go here and we click triangle center, as you can see, they now move to the center of each triangle. If we click here and put it on triangle side, they move to the side of a triangle, which could be this vertical part here, or this horizontal part there, or like here, this diagonal um, line. And the last one for the truly most random um, effect is random triangle point. It will pick a random point inside of a triangle. So as you can see here, it's near that edge. There it's in a different position. So these are your different distribution methods. So I'm just going to leave it on random triangle point for now. One last thing, we have selection random. I'm going to put this on sequential. I'm going to make sure we can't see the sphere. So sequential follows the order of the, the verts, the indices. So if this is on random, as you can see, they jump around. If I put it on sequential and I start pulling a number up, as you can see, it's following the order in which they're drawn. Okay, so I'm going to put this back on 100. I'm going to put this back on random. Click the sphere and render it again. So that's the op in its most basic form. We could also go here and um, get rid of this, and we could pull this out, and we could grab the scale geometry op. So instead of us having two spheres, we use one. We output the geometry, and I'm going to plug this in again, and it will explode. 
And then we scale this back down again, just like we did before. And this is just like, if you're going to reuse the same geometry, that's just more computationally um, uh, better to do. And it's just kind of like easier to keep track of. So what would happen if I'd want to put, say, cubes over the surface of this sphere? Nice and easy. Let's disconnect this. So we're going to pull this out. And I'm going to grab cube. And now I'm going to plug that into here. As we can see, cube is too big. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to type in scale geometry. I'm going to pull this down. So now I have these cubes over the surface. Well, I can now play around with things like this. And this is a good thing to show. Look what's happening now. We've got this big cube popping through. That's because we're rendering this one. So we're outputting the geometry and we're rendering the cube. So if I turn off active now, as you can see, we're just outputting the geometry, but we're not, um, we're not rendering this cube itself. So this can also create a really interesting effect. As you can see, we've got this like kind of like mini city um, on a globe. We could put the size on the 0 0.2. We could put the max size on 2. And as you can see, we're starting to end up with some really cool um, generative patterns here, which is a cube and with a sphere. Sky's the limit with this. So this is the basic part of how to do this with just basic geometries. But what happens if we're going to do it with something, say, like a cube? You're going to hit a different problem. So I create a cube, and I plug that into surface. And now I'm going to get the geometry output and plug it into simple wireframe. As we can see, a cube, let me just lower the amount of instances, a cube only has two triangles per side. And even with um, random and triangle point, we're not getting this nice uniform distribution. So to get that, we need to get more triangles on the cube. So you might be thinking, how do we do that? Well, in cables, we've got pretty much an op for everything. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to type in tessellate geometry. It creates new triangles in a mesh, and it subdivides it. Now, to visualize this, I have to reconnect that to the simple wireframe. And as you can now see, I've got more triangles on each side of the cube. So Let's go here and let's put this on, say, three. And now you can see I've got a lot of triangles over here. So if I'm going to like tweak this a little bit and put it on one, and I can now crank up that amount, as you can see, I get way better uh, random distribution over the surface of the cube. So tessellate geometry, that is your friend in this case. And one last thing I want to show you is let's, let's get this cube. Um, and let's put it on one, 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 one. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. And we're going to go to the library files, and I'm going to grab um, a 3D model of a head. So let's go here and grab the head.3d.json. Pull that in. And this automatically creates um, the 3D mesh um, op. So I'm going to pull out the trigger. I'm going to plug that here. As you can see, we've now got this head. So this also has a geometry output. So we're going to plug that in there. And it's a little bit small right now. So I'm just going to go right to the top here. And I'm going to insert a scale up. Let's just tidy that up a little bit. I just want to make everything a bit bigger. So I'll put it on two. Great. So now we're visualizing the geometry. Lots of triangles here. Lots of interesting things we can do. So we want to use this head as a surface. So once again, we get the geometry out and we plug it in there. And this guy really has a problem with some cubes popping out over his face. So let's scale this down now to say 0 0.02. So what's going to happen if I go here? Because don't forget, instancing is really fast, right? And I'm going to start cranking this up a lot. I'm going to put it on, say, 10,000. As you can see, performance is still really good. So if I want to get rid of the wireframe, I just click here and press D to bypass what's underneath it. And if I want to only see the instance um, uh, shapes now, I just click on the head, the mesh, and I um, click draw and turn it off. And look at this. This is an amazing effect that we've got right here. So we can now go to surface scatter instance. We can change the seed, and we can get a lot of different looks. So we could now go to the cube. We could draw this out. And as you can see, we've got a lot of different looks that we can go for um, right here. So basically, you've just got to get familiar with the fact that 
Um, let's just turn this back on with D. You just got to get familiar with the fact that you just need a model with enough triangles for this op to really be able to do what it's meant to do. So this was a basic introduction to the surface scatter instance op. Hopefully in the future, I'll be able to make a second video, which will show you how we can combine multiple versions of this to make really generative um, 3D pieces. But I think this has been more than enough today to get everybody going with this uh, really good op and this really good technique of using geometry and instancing. I'd like to say thank you for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.